It's nice out today. I can have the... Oh, brother. <laughs> Maybe that's why we left Arizona. And this my episode's uh, dedicated to Megan Kite. Megan Kite's a big supporter of this channel. So, Megan, this one's for you. We moved to Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, back in November of 2016. A couple months after we got married. We got married in late July of 2016. What would you say, Dan? What was the main impetus for why we went to all the way to Arizona? Because Arizona's far. We're both from Philly. It's over 2,000 miles away. And we did it. We wanted our freedom. Yeah, I mean, we were newly married. We wanted to have our own place. We wanted to have our own careers. We wanted to build a community of friends out there. I mean, we were bothered by the fact that we would be so far from family, but we thought we'll make it work. It'll be so good. It's a new, brand new beginning. And to give you a little bit further backstory, I took um, some summer courses. I took two summer courses at the Arizona State University back, way back when I was 21. It was my junior year um, in summer. And I loved it. And I had uh, an assistant at that time. We drove all the way across the country to Arizona State and we stayed in Phoenix proper. And we stayed in what was then a homestead, but today you would call it an Airbnb. And it was a lovely place. And it was, it was just an all around wonderful experience. I, lo I fell in love with Phoenix then. That's right. Our camera, <laughs> our camera overheated and we had to take filming inside. We couldn't even handle the high temperatures. It's kind of like people who leave Arizona. They just can't handle the heat. Arizona was built up to this ideal place, especially for me. There was a light rail that was eventually built in the city. It was an exciting development to, to hear that public transportation is really important to us. Phoenix also tends to have houses that are ranchers, so you don't have a lot of multi-story homes. And the dream was, after living in an apartment for some time, we would eventually buy our own home, and it would be much more accessible right off the bat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we thought that the job prospects were good and that we would both be able to find jobs fairly easily. I think another thing too was Phoenix is a relatively new city. Most of the structures, or at least the public places, are going to be wheelchair accessible. And that was a huge big deal for us. So Phoenix had a lot going for it. And we just bit the bullet and went out there. But before we did, we did make uh, a posting for personal care assistance at ASU. And it was the first time really for, for the both of us to get a, re a really good amount of candidates. We were already in contact with them months prior to the move. I even uh, established a relationship with a local aid, like home care agency as backup. What else we do? We had, we had a hard time finding an accessible apartment. Just like anywhere in this country, if you need a roll-on shower and you need 
or doorways to be of a certain width, typically 33 inches if you're a wheelchair user, you're gonna have a hard time. What we found, of course, was that the newer buildings and typically more expensive apartment uh, complexes were the ones that had some of those features. A lot of things were checked, you know, off, and they, it, it was relatively smooth. We had uh, an assistant who has been with us for years. She agreed to help us make the move. Her father was the one that drove uh, a Penske truck across the country. I mean, all of these things were happening and it made it possible. And we were there for nine months in Arizona. Uh, From November to the end of July of 2017. And we learned a lot. But what we sadly learned was despite our efforts to find employment, it wasn't working. Uh, we attended, I lost count how many job fairs we both went to. It's a very difficult time to talk about because there was just so much hope and I don't know, like just the feeling that it was gonna work, maybe, oh, I think. <laughs> I mean, I even worked with um, the local office of vocational rehabilitation. I had a counselor through the Ticket to Work program, which is a program to help people get off of SSDI and get back to work. And it was a mismatch because what I was capable of doing wasn't the, the jobs that were readily uh, made available through this program. And then for Dan, I think communication was a big issue. It was just really, really, really frustrating. The closest I got uh, was being a finalist for, you know, an HR job at a bank. And it was between me and the other candidate and they went with the other candidate. And I told Dan, if I don't get this job, that's it. Like, we can't, we can't do this anymore. The amount of money that was coming out was almost $5,000 a month. And that was just unsustainable. So I called up my mama and I said, do you think you're so capable of providing my care if we move back to Philly? And she said, of course. My middle sister was still alive and my mom was taking care of her too, of course. And so that was going to be an added thing. But, um, but we felt that that was the right thing to do. And it was hard because when you talk about our daily life there, it was pretty nice. Like I really enjoyed the people that we hired as assistants. We had a type of routine, we would make meals together, we would take the van occasionally for errands or even just fun trips. We would go to like Camelback Mountain or uh, uh, Mexican bakeries. Yeah. We, we drove even with one to Santa Fe and Jerry's brothers uh, out in Albuquerque. Oh, sorry, yeah, Dan's brother, Jerry. Dan, you know, would find places that we could go along the light rail by ourselves. And we found this one museum, I think it's called the Arche it's on the back of your chair, it's like a stick or something. The Archaeological, um, what was it called? Possibly. Once I realized I wasn't going to get a job, we just started to enjoy the rest of our time and, and prepare to leave again and pack up. So we came back. That is one of one of my big regrets is that we, we had to come back because of finances and it just hurt. So what does this all mean for you guys? If you are planning to move to a place, the number one thing, of course, with most things in life, it seems, but particularly if you live with a disability, is you gotta figure out what your financial situation is like. And it's very expensive to move, just in general, for anyone. So financially getting real, um, and then two is if you rely on personal care, you got to start like yesterday to, to make connections with people, to put out postings, to start interviewing people. Really, really important to establish that way before you actually 
leave. The other one is that we didn't do this enough of, um, is the healthcare situation. You gotta scope it out. I think we did a little bit. Right. I mean, we did it. Like we had our all of our doctors lined yeah. up, but I didn't really do that beforehand. Like, you want to at least consider what's available because there, are unfortunately, um, some healthcare professionals that just don't know the more rare conditions out there, and your treatment may be compromised because of that. So something to think about that, and of course. It are the accommodations. You're going to have to spend way more time than the average person scoping out and making phone calls and email, writing emails, asking them to measure the doorway. Um, are the knobs to the oven or stove in the front or are they all the way in the back? I mean, all these questions, all these details, it's beforehand planning, folks. So I think those are the top, what is it, four items? that we talked about that really need to be in place before you make that move. I, there's always gonna be a special place in my heart for Phoenix Dan. Ma and well but I Okay Zendan. Ha <laughs> We hope you found this helpful. Love. Keep it catchy. Ciao.